Hi, I'm B from Next Mechanics, and in today's video, we're going to be making a War for Cybertron diorama. Out of cardboard? Okay, a little bit of background for this project. I'm a Transformers nerd, like a heavy Transformers nerd. I've been into them for nearly 12 years now, ever since I was four and I first saw the original 80s movie, and I've just never stopped loving it. And over the years, I've amassed a large collection of Transformers. A lot of times, they'll make characters that are sort of Cybertronian based, which is like their own homeworld alien planet, because they, they're robot aliens, right? And a few years ago, they made a toy line devoted to it called War for Cybertron Siege. And they had loads of figures all reimagined in their own Cybertronian modes. Even characters who had never been seen before like it had their own alt modes like that style. This is one of my favorite Transformers lines. The ones that have come since Earthrise Kingdom, they're still good, but Siege is definitely one of my favorites. Now I've had a go at making dioramas before, about two years ago actually. This is before I'd really honed my skills as a crafter. So I thought, let's do this again, but we're still gonna do it out of cardboard. So to begin this project off, I did a sketch on my notepad. Normally I do like a rough sketch and then I do a finalized picture in Pixelmator, but this one was fine just doing it as a standard drawing. I was thinking I wanted to have a road at the front for my car dudes to drive on. Then I also wanted to have like a sort of Energon Lake because it's, it's bright pink Energon. It's their liquid, their lifeblood, whatever. It looks really cool. I'm going for the Bumblebee movie mixed with the Wolf Cybertron cartoon that they did recently. That sort of gritty, gnarly vibe, barely surviving because it's not. And I wanted a machine in the lake that was like an Energon refiner that was sort of sucking up the Energon and then converting it into Energon Cube. So once I finished my sketch and everything, I got to work. So when I did my previous diorama two years back, I was going to make a second one then. So I already had a template of the base cut out, but I never got around to finishing it. So I thought, if I'm going to make more dioramas with these shelves because they're all the same size, I might as well just leave that cardboard piece and just use it as a template for this new one. To begin with, I started mapping out where everything wanted to go. Now, obviously, like I said, I wanted the road at the front, so I started mapping that out, wanted that Energon Lake. I had some spare plastic bottles that I thought would be great if I cut them up to get that sort of tube effect. And it meant I didn't have to make circles. So once I managed to cop out of that hard mess, it was now to work on some of the extra bits at the back. Now at the back, I couldn't quite decide what I was doing at first. Uh, originally it was just sort of a blank bit with lots of steps going up. And then I looked at my drawing and I realized I'd drawn these like giant sort of pillars. And these pillars originally on the drawing were holding up an extra piece of road. But I decided to scrap that idea as it didn't really quite work. Then it was detailing. Lots of detailing. And each day I came back to it, it was going, okay, I've got my machine. I've got my road. I've got my back area with the tunnels and everything. Let's add the detail, add the detail. And it was just that for a lot of days. It was just doing all that. And let me remind you, hot glue, it is messy and it hurts. There is a lot of times where I burnt my fingers and it's actually quite funny. If when I do a hot glue project for a long period of time, usually a week, I actually get calluses on my fingers so that they stop burning as much. And the thing with a scratch built project like this is, yes, you can plan it out. Yes, you should plan it out. I didn't which did lead to me doing a couple of redesigns halfway through. Like I said, I had that drawing as a basis, but I wasn't following it 100%. It was more to get the vague placement and the vibes right. One thing that was really fun is I have a bunch of this like blue hot glue with glitter in it. And what I decided to do is I wanted to make an Energon cube because it's an Energon refinery, right? So the way I did that is that I made a cardboard cube that was hollow, filled the edges with the hot glue, and then I peeled it off and it came out as a perfect blue square. I also added some blue Energon splats on the machine, like it's been left and it's, you know, it's fallen off the conveyor belt and it's just broken into the ground from so much weight. Now for a lot of the project, I actually had my figures with me. I had the car ones there to test if they could fit in the tunnel or whatever. I had the various robots seeing if the heights were correct and everything. Didn't worry too much about the robot side because I knew that would probably fine as long as they have enough headroom. After a few days, it was starting to take shape, but this project was weird because I was expecting it to take me much less time than it did, and a lot of it was trying to get the final final details right before I was ready to paint it. If a project hasn't been painted, it's fine to throw it in the trash if you don't like it. You can normally recycle parts from it or whatever. When it's painted, you still can, but it feels more permanent, so I wanted it to be done right. So I made sure that I added little details in the floors, like circles and stuff. Again, getting that vague greebling. I decided on the far wall. I was going to try doing detailing on the walls, but it looked really weird. 
So my solution? Let's just build an entire control panel for the refinery, shall we? This is when it started to come together. I made a vague little control panel piece. I had like a little keyboard, a little computer terminal. Should have printed the screen instead of hand drawing it, but that's fine. Even though this is a control terminal, it'd be pretty fun if not only did it make energy on cubes, it could make energy rods. As a sort of homage to the first episode of the cartoon when Bumblebee and Wheeljack are looking for these energy on rods to help fuel their ship. And for those energy rods, yellow straws. They have the same diameter as the Transformers hands, and even if they're slightly too big, they squish so that they're able to fit no matter what. So I made a little port in the terminal that's sort of supposed to be making these, emitting them, that sort of a thing. The control terminal is actually one of my favorite pieces of this set. Because even though the lake and everything's cool and the road is fun for the cars to go on, it's really fun to have something for them to actually interact with like they normally would as a robot. I actually used a bit of plastic for one of my Transformers' boxes before I threw it out to actually give it a plasticky glass looking sheen on the display. That way, it looked less like I'd just drawn a computer terminal, and more like I'd drawn a computer terminal with a bit of glass over the top. Now later in the build, I started adding little air dry rocks to it. I had a bunch of leftover air dry clay from that Beast Wars diorama two years ago, which had dried by itself. It was fairly brittle, so I could just break it apart with my hands. I decided to do them as fairly small rocks, but have some of them be large clusters piled on top of each other to give it a cool effect. I also ended up doing things like the bar at the top, I thought that if there's yellow straws built into us, they're meant to look like energy rods that are actually powering the build. How are they powered? They're powered by Energon. So I thought if I had a chunk ripped off of it, I could have Energon leaking out of it with the splatter on the floor, and that's where I could also add a lot of rocks. Now, we're in the late game of the build, in terms of the actual constructing it part, physically. I did final little bits, railings around the sides, making sure everything's reinforced, one thing I did that was really fun, but an absolute pain, is I wanted a sort of coil connecting the terminal to the actual refinery machine. And the way I did that is some of it was just a cardboard tube, but the rest of it was actually a glue stick chopped up into little tiny sections and then skewered on a wire that I could bend into the correct shape. All right, now for the fun part, or so I thought. Painting! Now, painting is where a project goes from looking pretty cool to looking pretty cool. Now, like I said before, grunge vibe. So what I did is I painted everything silver. Everything except the lake, though. That, I used neon pink paint, which means it kind of looks like it's glowing. It's not actually, but it looks like it. So everything needed coats of silver. And this... Well, like I said, it was still cool to see everything start to come alive, but it was quite time-consuming. The silver coats, the base silver coats, everything's base coat is always credit. And one thing I forgot to do is actually shake your paint before you squirt it, because otherwise it's all very liquidy and nothing's... the consistency's wrong. So it meant that it was a lot harder to get layers on it because it was very thin. So once I got the base silver coat finally done, it was weathering. And if you haven't seen my last video, I did the same technique here. Washes. Washes are again where you get very thin water, very liquidy, and you essentially just cover it in it, and then you dab all of it off with a kitchen roll. Now, this is time consuming and I struggled to get the right consistency. I discovered that from this particular project, because it's not wood, it doesn't suck the paint as nicely, the cardboard. So I had to actually make it slightly thicker. It was still liquidy and it was still sloppy, but I was basically giving it a very thin coat of the black paint, the grunge, and then dabbing that off. And I got it in all the nooks and crannies, all the cracks and pieces. This is something I forgot to mention. Once I built everything, I went to town on it with the knives and with the little hammers and scissors and stuff. That was quite fun. So once everything was, you know, basically there, it's time to do the back walls. And the back walls were my enemy. Because you see, I am what we call a moron. I made the walls of the diorama glued to the project, which means that I couldn't actually get to the walls decently to paint it. And... I was running out of silver paint to give it a decent coat, and everything was just being hard. So I managed to get a basic enough silver coat around everything, and then it was the grunging time. And for this one, I did it differently. I still did the thin black coat and you dab it off, but for this, I almost sort of rubbed it in and smeared it around because I wanted the backdrop to be fairly different. But then 
it didn't. It looked exactly the same as everything else. So what I ended up doing is using the last of my silver paint to do a silver coat over the silver grunge color. And that way, it looked slightly more shiny than the rest of it, which gave it a nice color distinction. They're both gray, they're both silver, but one's slightly different. So after that, yeah, I got all my details together. You know, some of it was cardboard, some of it was scraps of wood. I done all the painting and everything. And then I realized I don't know if I like this. I spent like two entire days, maybe three days, just going, does this look right? Adds paint to it. No. Does this look right? Not really. And then I got to a stage where I was like, actually, everything's right, technically. So what am I finding wrong with it? And I think the problem I had was I was comparing myself to the professional diorama prop builders who have much more resources, much more time, have a team. And I was expecting to get the same level of detail out of cornflake boxes. I managed to get pretty close in the end. See, what I decided is let's just lather on the paint. Let's weather it over and over and over, maybe more than I should have done, but enough so that the silver was still there, but it was 90% grunge. I even painted the rocks as well. I gave them a pure light gray color rather than just a silver. So there was no metallic sheen. And then I did the black wash on that. That brought out all the little details in it. And once all was said and done, it was done. Now, even though I had had my doubts before, oh, uh, is the painting going to save it? I can officially say it did. It did. It did take a bit of persuading for me, but I actually left it on my shelf for a couple days to see how it felt. And yeah, yeah. But you know what really sold me on this project that turned me from going to here? Eh? The pictures. The pictures look incredible. And uh, I think instead of wasting your time talking about pictures, let's just show them. Dude. Dude. Like, I knew that the project was going to turn out pretty good, but it's came out exactly like my brain imagined it. That particular one, a bumblebee, he's got like his hand to the light or whatever. It's like, that's became a new fun backdrop for me, man. <laughs> Even though I really enjoyed doing this project, like in my last video, there's a few things I do differently next time. Number one, wish I hadn't just assumed that the template was going to work. It does work, but it sticks out ever so slightly, which lets the cornflake packets on the other side kind of stick through. Number two, I wish that the Energon Lake actually had a thin coat of resin over it or something like that just to make it look a bit more shiny and liquidy so it really pop from the sort of matteness of everything else. Number three, the computer terminal screen. I wish I'd printed it rather than hand drawn it because it ended up making it look a lot more handmade which is really not what I was going for. Number four, I wish the walls of the actual diorama had a few extra cuts of paint. It's not 100% my fault, I ran out of paint but it doesn't look quite as good for it. Without a light, it is so dark. It's like pitch black. Um, I've had it on my shelf for about a week now, and unless I put on one of my little lamps, it just, you can't see it. All in all, I really enjoyed this project. Um, it went from severe, I love this, to I hate this, to I love this again. And I hope you enjoyed this emotional roller coaster with me. So, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!